Okay, in this video, we're going to use ERP Lab. It has a number of algorithms that can detect artifacts, and we're going to use three of them to further scan our data and make sure that it's clean enough after ICA correction. So that's where we are. We've removed artifacts with ICA. So now we have three artifact routines we want to run. So we're going to click ERP Lab, Artifact Detection in Epic data and the first thing we're going to do is moving window peak to peak. Now these artifact projections are explained on the ERP lab documentation that's available online. So we're going to click here. Uh, now all you'll have to do is verify that the right values are in here from the protocol. They are correct. Make sure that the channels are the right channels. Uh, and then for this first one you're going to click um, 2. Now ordinarily you don't have to check the viewer. I'm going to check the viewer to sort of show you what happens when it detects some artifacts. We'll give a little uh, sample of that. So when we click this, it's going to run through and it's going to reject any trials that uh, meet the specifications that were specified in that box. So let's go ahead and save this. And I don't think yet. yet. So, I don't, so it's going to be uh, subject 101. And we had 256 hertz. It was filtered, uh, event, recoded it, Ben, Epic, ICA, and then moving window. So we add MW for moving window. We're going to copy that so we don't have to type it all the time. Um, so there we go. So we have our data file. Now let me show you what it did. So when it ran the um, algorithm, it shows you all of the bin here. So these are the bins that we have sorted. And what we're looking for is the number of trials in these bins are above 16 or so. You want 16 or so trials to have a good ERP. Some of them are kind of low, but that's okay because they may be error trials and we're not necessarily going to have ERPs for each subject for error trials, for example. So in the protocol, I'll specify which bins you should pay attention to and which bins should be greater than 16 for us to include that person in our uh, data set. But if you look over here on this other column, it tells you the number of trials and then the percent of trials that are rejected from each of the conditions. So when we ran that moving window, it rejected two from this bin, four from this bin, six from this bin, and so on uh, for a total of 41 trials or 11.6% of the data. That's not great, but it's not terrible either. Uh, and the the end result is, what are the numbers in your bins? Uh, is it good or not good? So pay attention to that as it's going going by uh, and as you do that. So let me show you what it looks like. So this is, oops, I didn't mean to do that. If you click on these, it'll, it'll remove and turns it yellow. That removes it for rejection manually. You don't want to do that. So we're going to scroll through the data. We'll try to find one of the trials that was rejected by this algorithm. It'll show up as being yellow, kind of like it did when I accidentally clicked on it. There we go. And you can see it puts in red the channels that were rejected based on this algorithm. So we could, sometimes this leads you to sort of do a better detection uh, or examination of channels if it's, uh, if it's really bad and it hope to recover some of the data. Um, but that's what it looks like. Uh, and we can move on and do our next artifact rejection, which is step-like artifacts. Again, you're going to pay attention to the, check the values in the window. They should be fine. Click three for this one. We'll get rid of the viewer this time. And we'll click accept. And here's what's going to happen. We're going to get our table in our command window. We have to save our data. So we're going to add to the file name. We're going to add step. And we click OK. And we scroll back up. And we see that there were no trials that were captured by this uh, algorithm. So that's a good thing. We didn't lose any data there. Uh, then the last one, we're going to collect blocking flatline. This detects flatlines in your ERP data set uh, that can happen if you have a dead channel or if you uh, have, if it goes out of range. It's not much of a problem with our uh, Neuroscan amplifier. We have a huge range, but we sometimes might have a flat or dead channel, in which case we want to detect that and maybe examine it a little bit further. So um, this is our third algorithm. So we're going to click four, check the values in here, click accept, and you're going to see that we had, well, let me first save it. And we're going to add flat to this data file. 
And uh, if we scroll back up, you see that we also lost no trials. Now, now that we're done with the detecting the artifacts and cleaning up our ERP averages, we want to save this information. So we're going to summarize the artifact detect, because this is just in a window, MATLAB window. Once we close MATLAB, it'll be lost. So we're going to summarize artifact detection in a table. And you're going to save it in a file. Now, this is all in the protocol. And we're going to call it uh, 101 flags. Uh, so we give the subject number, then flags.txt. We click Save. And now that information is retained in that file. So if I find that file for you and double click on it and open it up, you see it's saved permanently. So I can go back and look at that whenever we need to. We can see what happened with our uh, algorithms. So that's all you need to do for the remaining check of our data. It's all clean now. Uh, in the next video, we're going to cover a few other things to do, including re-referencing the data and plotting the ERP 